How are you? Today, now I am going to discuss the topic Kepler's second and third law. In the previous lecture, we discussed about the Kepler's first law and its derivation. Okay, what is the Kepler's uh, first law? All the planets revolve around the sun in an elliptical orbit. In any one of the four C, the sun exists. This is also called as the law of orbits. The Kepler's second law states that the aerial velocity of the planet remains constant. That means the vector joining the planet and sun sweeps out equal areas in equal intervals of time. So this is the Kepler's second law. This talks about the conservation of angular momentum because of that the aerial velocity of the radius vector uh, remains constant. The Kepler's third law states that the square of the time period of revolution is directly proportional to cube of the semi-major axis. That mathematically we write it as p square directly proportional to a cube or t proportional to a power 3 by 2. So Kepler's first law is called the law of orbit. Kepler's second law is called the law of area. The Kepler's third law is also known as the law of orbit. Now let us see the derivations for the Kepler's second law and third law. You see this figure. This figure. Uh, a planet is revolving around the sun in an elliptical orbit, right? Where uh, P is the planet. S stands for the sun. The line joining the planet and the sun represents the radius vector, right? So now, in the time interval delta t, suppose that the planet uh, moving from the position p to p dash, then, then the arc length is equal to delta r and angular displacement, say, theta. When the planet is at the position P, the radius vector R. When it is at the position P dash, the position vector R plus dr. So now when it is moving from P to P dash, angular displacement is theta. Right. So in the time interval delta T, planet uh, uh, position changing from P to P dash, then the area swept by the radius vector is S T P dash. Uh, the area of this uh, sector that uh, how delta A is equal to we can write of R square delta theta of R into then uh, this delta R equal to we know R delta theta so hence delta A is equal to of R square delta theta clear so here planet P which P dash to Chitapuru Adi sweep out chase at one area m and rasta namanamu yes p p dash. Okay, the area of the area of s p p dash. So e sector area is equal to then a delta a at namu that equal to half. Then we may triangle guys do this day half into base into height and put it half into so here r into so there delta r is equal to r delta theta then we get that equal to half r square delta theta now you you differentiate this expression with respect time delta a by delta t is equal to let us change the fellow delta a by delta t is equal to delta a by delta t is equals to half r square delta theta by delta t okay so here the time interval is very small when we take uh, limit delta t tends to zero delta a by delta t is equal to of r square 
limit delta t tends to zero delta theta by delta t. So left hand side according to the definition of differentiation, this can be written as dA by dt that equals to on rh so half r square, this is d theta by d. So, you can have a game the dA by dt equal to half r square d theta by dt. Okay. Kani, so, you can have r square d theta by dt in small h. This is equal to h by 2, where h is constant, hence this is equal to constant. This is equal to constant. Okay. So, there we have taken the substitution h is equal to r square d theta by dt. Then, we m to t numerator denominator no multiply j. m r square d theta by dt by m. This is equal to d theta by dt angular velocity m r square omega by m. m. M R square omega represents what angular momentum by M. We know that the angular moment, angular momentum of the particle moving under the central force remains constant. This is we have proved in the characteristics of the central force. Since L is constant, where M is the planet mass that is constant, L by M is all obviously constant. L by M equal to constant. Hence, H is equal to constant. Therefore, dA by dt equal to h by 2 that equal to constant. Finally, what is the conclusion? The aerial velocity of the radius vector joining the planet and the sun remains constant. That means the radius vector joining the planet and sun sweeps out equal areas in equal intervals of time. Hence, Kepler's second law is proved. Now let us go for uh, Kepler's third law. What is the statement of Kepler's third law? P square proportional to A Q. The square of the time period of the evolution of the planet is directly proportional to two of the semi-major axes. Okay. So that proof can come on to start like this. So you could have Planet to make elliptic orbit to revolve open, right? So, what a round, what a revolution complete chase thing. Then, area swept by the radius vector into the area of the ellipse of okay. So, using that expression, the time period of a planet t is equal to area swept by radius vector in one revolution. That is pi AB, area of total area of ellipse by velocity dA by dt. That equal to pi AB by the Kepler's second law. We prove that dA by dt equal to how much h by 2. That gives 2 pi AB by h. Okay. But in the properties of ellipse, we know that semi lattice rectum L is equal to h square by mu. From this, h square is equal to mu into L. From this, h is equal to root of mu L. Okay. Let us substitute this value in the expression of P. 2 pi AB by h is root of mu L. But semi lattice rectum L is equal to B square by A that equal to in terms of semi-major axis and semi-minor axis. Small a stands for semi-major axis, small b stands for semi-minor. This is the major axis, this is the minor axis. This half of the semi-major axis represented by a, half of the semi-minor uh, mini minor axis, so that is semi-minor axis represented by b, when l is equal to b squared by e. Substituting this value here, then t is equal to 2 pi ab by root of mu l is equal to b square by a. Okay, root b square b cancel. So here root a, the root uh, what is that? a, already a in the numerator. Then we get 
a into root a a power three by two by root three. So t from this very clear t directly proportional to a power three by two or t square proportional to a. T time period of revolution of the planet a semi major axis. Clear. Therefore, a uh, statement. Uh, the square of the time period of the planet is directly proportional to cube of the semi-major axis. Hence, Kepler's third law is proved. Kepler's first law, again, I'm repeating, Kepler's first law states that the, all the planets revolve around the sun in an elliptical orbit. Hence, it is called as the law of orbit. Kepler's second law states that the aerial velocity of the radius vector remains constant, dA by dt equal to constant. Kepler's third law states that the square of the time period of revolution of the planet is directly proportional to cube of the semi-major axis. Okay, thank you.